In this video, we will talk about MongoDB, especially MongoDB Atlas, and we'll also talk something about MongoDB clusters, what they are and how they work. And after that, I will show you how we can connect our existing React application to the MongoDB Atlas database, or basically the MongoDB clusters. So the first thing we'll need to do is, I'm currently in mongodb.com, and the first thing we need to do is we need to create an account in MongoDB. So you can do so by clicking on this try free button. In my case, I already have an account, so I can directly sign in, and I've already signed in as well. So if you do not have an account yet, just go ahead and create the account and sign back in. And once you are signed into MongoDB Atlas, you will be presented with a screen similar to this. You might be presented with a different screen, but in my case, I'm presented with a screen like this because I actually have an organization already created, and I actually created a project yet. So you can go ahead and create an organization if you want. And after the organization is created, you can create a project inside that organization. So in order to create an organization, you can click on that button there and you can see we all organization in my case, but then you can create a new organization here and you can name it whatever you want. And there are some other default options that you can choose as you would like. But in my case, I've already created the organization. So I'll just go back and once the organization is created you can create a project so you can just click on that new project button that you just saw or you can actually view all project and you can click on this button to create a new project and in my case i've already created a project that was super simple so i'd not want to include that in this video but once the project is created and if you click on the project that you created inside your organization Click on that project and you will be presented with a screen like this. Once we click on this build a database button, what it is doing is that it is building a MongoDB Atlas database. So MongoDB Atlas is basically a cloud-based database service that is provided by MongoDB itself. It allows users to easily set up, manage, and scale MongoDB applications in the cloud without actually having to manage any infrastructure. So we can go ahead and build a database and let's do this from scratch. So deploy a database. So there is a free version available. So we would rather go ahead and switch free version. It does come with some limitations though because the storage size for the free version is only 512 MB and you have a shared RAM and the virtual CPU is shared as well. So let's choose on the free version. And the provider, I'm going to choose AWS because once my React application is ready for production, I actually plan to deploy my completed React application to AWS. So I choose AWS. And for the reason you would usually want to choose North Virginia, that is US East Coast 1, US East 1, especially if you are in the United States. But if you are in a different region, you would choose some other regions that is provided by AWS. But in my case, since I'm currently in Minnesota, United States, I'm going to choose North Virginia, US East 1. And after that, you can actually name a cluster. So the default name will be cluster zero. And as you create more and more clusters, this number will be incremented as you create more clusters. In my case, I'll just leave it to cluster zero and I'll hit on the create button. And before I actually hit on that create button, let's actually talk briefly about what clusters are. So in MongoDB, a cluster is basically just a group of MongoDB instances that work together to store and process data. Clusters are the very foundation of MongoDB's distributed architecture and are designed to provide high availability and high scalability at all times. So let's go ahead and create that cluster. And once that cluster is created, you would it will ask you how would you like to authenticate your connection and in my case i'll choose username and password and i'll provide a username and password here so I'll, in my case i'll just type in my full name as the username and in the password section i'll just write password as testing one two three four and let me yeah let's let's just show that password and remember when you try to connect your database to your application this password field cannot contain any special characters so if you put in a special characters like at or exclamation or hash or dollar it is going to give you a mongo api error which i actually made a different video about and i talked about that in detail in another video so i will put a link to that video down in the description for you to watch about this password in mongodb atlas but for now i'll just the password as testing one two three four 
and I will create a user called Prashan Padasaini with a password testing one two three four. So let's create that user, and of course that user already exists. So in my case, the user is already there, so I do not need to do that. So I'll just leave that over there. And where would you like to connect from from this options? Since I am in the development environment correctly, I'm building the React application in my local server. So I'll choose my local environment and the IP address. You can type in your local IP address or it also has a button called add my current IP address and it will add it automatically. In my case, I already have the IP address added over there. In if you did not have this and you clicked on that add my current IP address button, it should work out. And after that, uh, it looks like everything is done. I will just finish and close and it says congratulations on setting up access rules and we'll just go to the dashboard after that. So after all that's done, we have a cluster called cluster zero and this database is ready to be connected to our, to, or to my React application in this case, because you might not even have a React application or you might have a different React application. But I do have a React application here. So in order to connect that, this React application and this application, React application is rendered on the server side and it will also be rendered on the client side. That's uh, what I'm working on currently. Uh, but in order to connect this React application that I have in order with the database that I just created, I'll create a file called inside server folder. I'll create a file called index.js and I'll import express. I'll import mongoose and make sure that you actually have this mongoose package installed before you can use it. It allows you to manage your MongoDB database. And I have, declared a variable called db, which stores this Mongo URI. And then I called, I have imported this create server function. And then I try to connect my React application to this, to the MongoDB database that I just created with the help of Mongoose and then dot connect, and then provide that db as a parameter and then call this create server function. And then if the connection is successful, I console log app running on port, in this case 5,000. And if there's any errors, I just console log this error and with any errors that MongoDB might show. So after that's done, the, there are two things here, the variable DB and the create server function. Let's quickly look at the create server function. So the create server function, I, I have imported express and I have defined some routes that are public routes. And because this is, let's go ahead and look in this public uh, route slash public file. In this route slash public file, I have imported React and React DOM server because I am rendering React on the server side from scratch without using any framework like Next.js. I know that Next.js makes it a little bit easier to render React application on the server side, but I wanted to try doing whatever Next.js does completely from scratch, and it was really simple. And I'll make this video sometime soon in the future. I'm currently working on. Uh, this somewhat big React application. So once I'm done, uh, it'll probably be a couple hours long video about how to set up React from scratch and uh, render React on the client side as well as on the server side in the same application. I'll do that video in the future, but for now, this route file contains this app component rendered on the server side using React DOM server dot render to string. And the server basically sends this HTML with whatever content this app component has. And I've imported this route in the create server and I just return the app. And after that, you, if you go to this index.js file, I've imported this DB or the Mongo URI. And so in order to do that, I created a file called keys.js and I export the Mongo URI and with this, username and password, I created that earlier while creating a user in this MongoDB database. And in order to connect that, in order to get this MongoDB or, or the Mongo URI information, all you have to do is click and connect and you can just directly connect your application and this is the Mongo URI. So I'll just copy that Mongo URI and close that. And then I will paste that Mongo URI over here. And it already has my username for the password field. I'll need to provide a password. So that's basically the same as before that is testing one, two, three, four. 
So once that's done, the keys is set up. And normally, just to be safe, you would not want to store your username and password in a file called keys.js in your project directory because it's, it's, if, if something goes wrong, then this can actually be exposed. Usually you'd want to create an environment variable and store whatever your username and password or any other sensitive information like that. You'd want to store that in a different way as it is right now, but since I'm in a development environment, like it's much easier to just create a keys.js file and then store the database credentials here. So after I have provided that Mongo URI and all my connections is set up. I can just run the terminal and the application will be connected to the MongoDB database. So let's do npm run dev. And it's now currently building Webpack. I've set up React to render on the client side as well as on server side using Webpack. So on webpack.client.js that will handle all the client configuration and the webpack.server.js will handle the server configuration. And after that, it is actually giving me an error, it looks like. So it says that, so there is an error, could not connect to MongoDB and the server. So let's see what's going on. And the error is query mongodb.net. So let's look at the keys. Our keys should be correct. So we have that and then we are testing one, two, three, four. Let's go to MongoDB Atlas and see what's going on here. And it might take some time for this database to actually be active. So maybe that's why I got that error, but let's try it again. And I'll just go ahead and run that again and see if that'll work. And it looks like it is running. I did not get any errors. It is running and it is actually building the application. And I've configured this with Webpack. That's why there's a lot of other things coming in. But I did see that, that, the, that the app is running on port 5000. So if I open up port 5000, the application should be running. And this application is now connected to the MongoDB database. And if I just refresh it, not that page, of course, this one, if I refresh that, every single time there is any changes. So in this case, the my React application is not doing much interaction with the database, but every single time I refresh the page, it is at least changing this value. So it is hitting the database. So it was really that easy. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And I will soon be coming up with a full stack MERN application, MongoDB, React, Express, and Node application. It will be a full stack application. You'll, I'm super excited for that. If you, and, and, and that React application will be rendered on the client side as well as on the server side. So usually, let me give you an example. So this is a React application that I developed in, and, and this is rendered on the server side right now all this information that you see is rated on the server side and i can verify that by going to the network tab and refreshing the page and clicking on localhost you see that all this content is already rendered here so if you are using create react app and you have the application running here and if you go to network tab and click on that localhost you will see this page blank and this is not very good for us search engine automation there should be some content so that Google, whenever it visits your homepage or any other pages that you want to be ranked on search engines, search engines need to see the content in the first attempt because search engines do not un completely understand JavaScript yet. So if you are using client-side rendering, then your web page might not rank as high as the page that's rendered on the server side. So in my case, this homepage is rendered on the server side, as you can see, and if I click on this contact us, this is also rendered on the server side, all the contents. And this page is not, of course, not complete yet. And I have another page called login page. This is also rendered on the server side so that the search engines can actually rank this page. So that's all server rendered. But 
there is one concern. So let's say that after I log into the page and this login is not complete, I have not implemented that functionality yet. But the next thing that I'm doing is once I log into my application and once I get redirected to the dashboard, I do not want Google to index any pages in the dashboard. For example, profile pages, maybe profile settings, maybe create a new blog post page. So I do not want search engines to rank any of those. So in order to do that, for search engines to not rank or to not even see any of those, the one thing we can do is we can render all those pages on the client side where the JavaScript will be doing a lot of work. So that's what the project that I'm working on correctly currently. And once I'm done with that project, I will create a full tutorial, a full course on a most advanced modern application and enterprise level application. So I'm very excited about that. And if you want to see that video sometime soon in the future, please don't forget to hit subscribe and leave any comments down in the comment section below any suggestions any advice thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one